I realized that every time I make a video, I have this very conscientious intention of looking in, at the camera. And then halfway through, I get distracted by my own face. Um, partly it's because I can respond to it. It looks sort of like a human, so <laughs> kind of. So um, I can, I feel like I'm talking to someone. But um, whereas I, I only have the vaguest notion of where actually the camera lens is on, on my phone. So I'm kind of staring into space um, as I'm looking at you. So I have to picture something kind of semi-human in there. Anyway, um, it is the, I, I'm just making this video right after the one I made about English people and Canadians because I wanted, to, I had, I thought of something else that I wanted to talk about. And um, I changed my shirt so that it looks a little bit different. Like I have, so that you can sort of recognize that this is a different subject matter. Um, I used to watch a lot of YouTube and I think that the reason that I became so obsessed with YouTube was I discovered this vlogger or I don't know, I think there's another word for it when you just talk into the camera about your life and your your opinions about art and music and philosophy and stuff and um, this was a YouTuber who did that. Um, I'm not sure if she still has a channel. She removed a lot of her videos at a certain point and I, she had started her channel back in the days when YouTube was not a part of Google. Um, it is Google that bought it, right? Not Microsoft? Or Microsoft bought Google? I'm not sure. Anyway, there's a lot of conglomerating going on and I did notice that the content on YouTube was a lot less censored, restricted in those days. Um, she, this girl was a kind of a sex worker, artist, philosopher, um, who lived in Chicago. She had grown up in the projects in Chicago and her channel name was Glorious Man Destroya. And she called herself Goddess Glory. Um, and she talked about all kinds of interesting things. She talked about politics and religion and sexual politics, especially. Um, she talked, she was interested in spirituality and mysticism and, and she would allude to the fact that she had all these books on witchcraft and paganism and um, all kinds of things like that. But she she never talked about that stuff in her videos that much. Um, I got attracted to her videos. I think I was looking for some kind of gay content and then one of her videos came up because she talked about that. And um, I just liked the way she spoke. She had this very interesting tone and diction and it was sort of familiar to me in a funny sort of way, which is weird because, you know, um, her accent wouldn't be one that I would necessarily be that familiar with. But I just, I loved the way she spoke and enunciated and she had this incredible kind of um, mixture of, of very sort of cultured, but also really kind of street at the same time. And, um, or I mean, not to say that those two things are somehow in contrast to each other necessarily but it's it was a combination that i hadn't seen very much and um and so basically i wanted to appreciate that youtuber goddess glory because um she had inspired me so much and actually i became so interested in youtube and so kind of why is it doing that so addicted because of her and then I started watching more and more channels like that where people would just talk instead of, you know, the gag videos where people are falling or it's a dance video or it's a music video. I watched a lot of those also, but this was the first time I got into some kind of content with, with depth that was also not programmed. It wasn't scripted. It wasn't kind of put together by some kind of a marketing team. It was just someone in their house who wanted to express. And I found that really fascinating and also it was really interesting to watch. So thank you, Goddess Glory. And if her channel is still here, I will link you 
And I think that that channel has a link to her blog where I think at a certain point she became tired of some of the policies on YouTube. I think her videos were getting flagged a lot because of her topics maybe. Um, but I don't know exactly what was considered inflammatory. And I don't, I know that if people have a problem with their topics, that it's very hard to contact YouTube and appeal anything. So I think that she had been struggling with that. And um, it kind of, I, I do regret the fact that the internet has become so much more regulated. I did enjoy the days when it was more of a free for all and it was a little bit more I have a little bit of an anarchistic streak. Sometimes I wonder, like we're so afraid of chaos and, and, you know, we're controlling each other so much out of fear, like as if you have to train people to be good people. But I wonder if someone is only not murdering people because of the threat of the punishment of, of being convicted then is that good? Like, you know, they haven't learned compassion. They haven't learned empathy. They've just learned fear of repercussion. So how is that really good anyway? So I think, I think that, you know, people do that. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm burning incense and it's choking me. Um, I guess the idea is to protect the people who are good from the people who would run amok and prey upon them. So we have all those rules in place. But, um, but I have definitely seen examples of, of kind of primitive communities that are sort of utopian and they're not regulated by anyone. They're just sort of living. And they're beautifully, I remember seeing one documentary about a tribe in the Amazon who just lived together so beautifully and so helpfully. And um, it was quite inspiring to see. And I have completely derailed my own topic. I don't even know why. Why I got into all that but um, I just wanted to give a shout out and praise to Goddess Glory and thank you for inspiring me and so many others because I know that when you cancelled your channel a lot of people were wailing about it and wondering where your videos were so anyway bye for now and blessed be to everyone